I'd more than happily go a year, two years without rescuing someone if I can get a thousand different preventative actions because you're going to educate people, it's going to create a better culture and it's also going to save lives. I first started surf lifesaving as a nipper. I had mates from school who were members of the club and I thought I'll give it a go of something else to do, something a different challenge. I was never a strong swimmer, I was never confident in the waves, but it's also taught me the skills, it's taught me how to get through the waves, it's taught me how to paddle a board properly. And from there I went on, I've done my surf rescue certificate, I've done my bronze medallion, and now I've started to branch into operation support. My current role in op support is actually as a surf comm operator. So a surf comm operator is a person who works and maintains the networks. They liaise with outside organisations and they're there to provide assistance to people on the beach. So they work in conjunctions with the wave runners, the duty officers, the helicopter, the police service, the ambulance service and any other emergency service that may actually have a problem. So they're the first point of call for all the information to come in. So everything you say has to be simple, to the point, easy to understand. Otherwise, people can be going in the wrong direction and we can cause further problems. It does get stressful at some stages, but it's about how you handle that stress. So you remain calm, you try and keep everyone else around to calm you and provide the best assistance you can. And that's why we're there to be able to provide assistance. The problem solving skills that I learned through Surfcom have majorly benefited everything in my life so far. When I first started in life saving, I was very quiet, very shy. I wouldn't be able to stand here and talk to you like I am now, but I'm more than happy now to stand up in front and deliver a program. It made me grow as a person, but it's given me a family and also a baseline of people I can get along with. When I had to move to Victoria for work in Melbourne, basically I moved down there by myself, had no one I knew, no family, no friends. Surf Life Saving was an easy out because as soon as I joined the Surf Life Saving Club, I had an easy 10 to 15 people I knew. I had social connections, I had things I could do on the weekend. Because it's all nationally recognised, we all train the same way. You can go from one place to another, you can get straight back involved, you don't have to do bridging courses, you don't have to sign up again, you can just get straight back on the beach doing what you love and be able to provide assistance to the people on the beach. The social network you develop within Life Saving, I thought, was just going to be friends, but also can be working to networking. It's really been a, a massive pathway of self-development, self-growth. So it's taken me out of my shell and develop personal skills, also it's taught me how to network. I actually started talking to a person on the beach from my surf club that got me into my current job at the moment. So he was the one who told me about it. He was the one who helped me get through the application process, gave me ideas, gave me, well, this is what you need to do, this is the people you need to talk to. The friends and stuff you develop, they're the most friendliest people that I've ever found across any organisation I've been involved in. The best way to get involved in life saving is go down and see your local club. It's probably one of the best things I've ever done. Um, when I have kids, I'd probably first thing I'll be doing is getting involved as well. So it's something I'd really recommend to everyone and anyone who's thinking about it. Even if you don't get involved is what most, what some people are. Once you start, you somehow get sucked into it and it just becomes, pretty much becomes your life and you love it.